thank you for your kind introduction. I am Sugita from University of Tokyo, and today on behalf of our group members, I will introduce our research about browsing group first-person videos with 3D visualization. Group first-person videos, that is a collection of first-person videos, is a very interesting topic for us. Especially, we consider a scenario where multiple workers are mounting wearable cameras on their heads and sharing their working space. For example, sports games such as football, house relocation, and surgeries are our target scenarios. To browse these multiple first-person videos, we developed a novel user interface which has 3D visualization of workspace and we are our cameras, as you can see in this movie. From now, we detail on our study about this newly developed user interface. First person video is a video record taken from VR's first person point of view. The first person videos have the remarkable advantages. For example, by using wearable cameras, we can record our daily activities with no spatial constraints because there is no need to install cameras on the environment. And we can also obtain close at hand view of the activity with no collisions. In addition, we can obtain rich clues to understand what the wearers look and with whom they interact from the first person videos. Focusing on these advantages, we are now applying the first-person videos to record and review complex group activities done by multiple workers, such as sports game or surgery. Group first-person videos are very useful because they offer rich clues to understand group activity, such as important person or objects that commonly appear in multiple videos. Many interactions or collaborations also appear in videos. By utilizing such clues, we can effectively understand the complex group activity. Our final goal is to explore group first-person videos as good means to review and learn group activity. However, on the other hand, we confront lots of difficulties when viewing first-person videos. As we can see in this example video, there appears continuous head motion over a viewer. Moreover, we can see only a limited part of entire workspace, so it is very difficult to track geometric location of viewer. The second example video shows five workers uh, sitting around a table and divided into three groups to perform collaborative tasks, such as drawing papers. As we can see, when viewing these multiple first-person videos at once, it is very difficult to understand the positional relationship of multiple workers, such as who is sitting in front of whom, or it is also difficult to understand collaborative relationship of workers, such as who is working with whom. As a previous interface to browse these multiple person videos, recent studies have developed immersive and real-time view sharing systems. For example, in parallel eyes, participants can share all the other participants' first person videos and points of gates. However, this interface has no map view to grasp other participants' locations. So if we use this interface, it is still challenging to grasp the location of multiple workers. In the second example, Jacqueline Airsoft, that game players can switch between their own view, other players' views, and the gaming map. However, this interface is not designed to review the group activity afterwards by non-participants of the game. So if we use this interface, it is still difficult to track 
space share, and temporal locations and collaborations of multiple workers. Therefore, to overcome the remaining difficulties in prior studies, we developed an over-user interface which has a new workspace view widget as well as the tiled multiple first-person view windows. The new workspace view includes 3D visualization of workspace and 3D visualization of camera locations, orientations, and pathways. Our interface is designed based on three concepts. First, by visualizing workspace in 3D, we assist understanding of entire workspace geometry from each first person point of view. Second, by visualizing each camera position, we assist understanding of positional relationship of multiple workers, such as their formations. And third, by visualizing each camera position, orientation, and pathway, we assist understanding of collaborative relationship of workers, such as who is forming a group with whom. We also briefly describe how to reconstruct working space and cameras. First, we reconstructed 3D model of the workspace. This reconstruction was done separately from the recording of group activity. The reconstruction process is four steps. Scanning workspace with VR camera, extracting image features, estimating sparse point crowd, and finally we obtained 3D dense point crowd of the workspace by applying conventional computer vision techniques such as structure from motion or uh, multi-view stereo. Second, we reconstructed ports of each VR camera by four steps. Recording group activity, extracting image features, and future matching between new first person image and reference images which were used for the 3D reconstruction of the workspace. And finally, we obtained 3D ports of each camera by applying conventional 2D, 3D alignment techniques. Now, in order to evaluate the effects of our newly developed 3D visualization designs, we conducted a user study. The main purpose of this study is to confirm whether or not the proposed workspace view assists understanding of locations, positional relationships, and collaborative relationships of multiple workers. For this user study, we prepared an experimental interface like this. By using this interface, participants can play screen capture of the baseline or proposed interface. Participants can play screen capture and uh, they can read experimental instructions, perform experimental tasks, and draw answers on cameras. The reason for using screen capture instead of presenting the interface is to focus on the evaluation of our new visualization designs. So human factors such as the manipulation of the interface are removed <coughs> from this study. So our experimental condition is 12 participants are recruited and they tackled three experimental tasks with two visualization methods. One is the proposed visualization with workspace view, and the other is the baseline visualization without workspace view. That is a similar setting to parallel eyes. The evaluations for the user study are accuracy of the task and subjective ease of task which is scored by each participant with seven grades, and interviews 
about the use cases of each visualization. We now detail on the three experimental tasks. In task one, we tested whether the purpose visualization assists understanding of location of a worker. In this task, participants browse one first person video and draw workers moving trajectory on floor map. This video is lasting about 10 seconds and worker is always walking around and sometimes viewing, uh, changing their viewing direction. This is a difficulty of this task. Then talking about evaluation. The trajectory is squared by its starting point, end point, and the pass route. Starting point and end point were squared by using grid lines overlaid on canvas, and where the pass route was squared by its positional relationships with tables or pillars. For example, as you can see in the answer on the right, the pass route was not correct because the trajectory does not pass through between correct disks. Next in task two, we tested whether the proposed visualization assists understanding of positional relationship of multiple workers, such as formations. In this task, participants browse three first-person videos and draw positions and IDs of multiple workers on floor map. Videos are lasting about 20 seconds, and the difficulty of this task is workers' formations are continuously changing during the video. And for evaluation, we squared the answers by their positions and formations of their IDs using grid lines. For example, as you can see in the answer on the right, the formation was not correct because the IDs are lined up one, two, three in clockwise order. This is the reverse of the correct answer in the left. And finally, in task three, we tested whether the proposed view assists understanding of collaboration of multiple workers. In this task, participants browse five first-person videos and find a worker who is forming a group with a given worker and draw position and IDs of the group members on floor map. The videos are lasting about 30 seconds and the difficulty of this task is there occurs multiple group collaborations here and there at once. So participants should precisely identify the target group from several candidates. The answer is squared by the group members' positions and IDs using the grid lines. And you can see in the example on the right, uh, the group member was not correct. Now we report on the results. We confirmed that the proposed workspace view assisted understanding of locations, positional relationships, and collaborations of workers. As you can see in the left chart, accuracies were improved in all the tasks, especially in task one and two, the squares were significantly up compared to the baseline. Then you can see in the right chart, subjective edges of task were also significantly improved in all the tasks. The reason for this improvement is we think that uh, in the baseline, such as parallel eyes setting, participants are very busy to compare multiple videos to find locations and the collaborations by contrast, in the proposed, these busy behaviors were effectively replaced by just looking at one workspace view widget. We also report in the brief summary of the interviews. As for the use cases of 3D visualization, four camera 
camera position. It was used as a cue of finding workers' position and collaboration. For camera orientation, it was used for finding workers' interests, viewing directions, and working space. And for camera pathways, it was used for finding future location of a worker. On the other hand, we also received negative feedbacks about the interface, such as the estimation error of camera positions or low quality of 3D model. These limitations should be improved in our future work. In final slide, we repeat the contribution of our study. So this is the end of our research presentation. Thank you very much for your listening. Thank you very much for this good and on-time presentation. So are there questions in the audience? Please <clears throat> state your name and affiliation if you go to the microphone. And while you are still thinking, I ask you a question. And your user study, your user study um, uh, shows that you are interested in, in analysis tasks. You would like to find out uh, relations between people and so. So did you think about uh, increasing your toolkit, also providing aggregated views like a heat map of the people or like the trajectories being displayed um, for longer time. So, so to see, get more insights uh, already in the analysis tool. So to see a bit more, like, like for example, a heat map where the people are on the floor, where the oh. people were moving around over time. Okay. Uh. I didn't research a uh, feed map. I didn't research feed map, but uh, uh, in our study, uh, we we uh, we studied about the uh, uh, load of multiple workers. Yeah, and uh, and this have to understand the role of multiple workers. Mm -hmm. In this case, uh, this. Um, and this is visualization is uh, useful, but uh, this result was not uh, significant. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is observed in our study. Yeah, yeah and in that case, uh, uh, we have some feedbacks about this interface, uh, such as the uh, uh, position of the videos and the positional relationship between the videos and the workspace we widget. For example, uh, the videos uh, of uh, cross grocery positions, uh, the videos of grocery positions work uh, should be uh, grocery position uh, in videos. Okay, <laughs> sorry. Okay, yeah. It's, it's just, uh, just a su suggestion that one, of course, could improve the, the tool in terms of uh, more analysis features, like showing where the people are over time uh, in more detail. And may, yeah, are there more questions? <clears throat> uh, he is also demoing that uh, uh, yeah. that tool. Um, I just wanted to point that out, and you can also spin around uh, the scene, the three D scene, and follow different uh, people. And this is maybe a second question: Did you think about um, taking a person's view in this three uh, D scene? That means that, for example, see the scene from this person. So you can click on the person, for example, and then the camera is automatically oh. following that person. So you see what this person has seen, basically, in the three D scene. Scene. <coughs> okay. So yeah, I'm presenting the three D model from each first person point of view is uh, and the idea. Uh, uh, I already have received uh, some comments from the participants, and this uh, application is it's a good idea to implement in our future work, I think. Yeah. All right. If there are no more questions, are there questions? Then, yeah, Ed? Hi, uh, Ed C. from Nui Tech. I'm I like the idea of having the multiple cameras um, and being able to see them all at once, but I'm wondering if I were to use the tool to tell a story, um, so I want to tell somebody about what happened in this room, um, how would you like 
tell the story, would you be able to like focus on just one of the camera views at a time and then use it to like switch between the different cameras to focus on the story? Because there's so much stuff going on at the same time, yeah. I'm worried that I'll get lost. Yeah, uh, I think so. Uh, in uh, in group activities, uh, uh, observers uh, may be confused because uh, uh, they don't know where to focus on in these as uh, many many videos and uh, uh, working space, but. Uh, some uh, uh, some choice to this uh, to resolve this problem is to uh, automatically uh, change the viewing of uh, these models or configuration of multiple videos. And but the so the, these are many options to search in future work, I think, so, yeah. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, so it's my pleasure to announce